Suppose you are asked to prove or disprove the following claim. f of n is big O of g of n implies that g of n is big O of f of n. This is a problem from the textbook. So how would you go about proving or disproving such a claim? Well, the easiest approach is to use limits. Right, if f of n is, so let's start from what is given to us. What's given to us is f of n is big O of g of n. And we have to find out whether or not g of n is big O of f of n or not. So based on what's given to us, one can say that if we take the ratio of f of n to g of n as n tends to infinity, this ratio must either be 0 or it must be some positive constant k greater than 0. And the reason for this is, if f of n is big O of g of n, that means there must exist some constant c2, some positive constant c2 such that for all values of n that are large enough, f of n is bounded from above by c2 times g of n. And if this inequality holds, then if we take the ratio of f of n to g of n, the ratio of f of n to g of n for all n greater than or equal to n0 must be less than or equal to c2. So there are only two options. Either f of n by g of n must be 0 or it must be some positive constant k greater than 0. That's the only way in which this can be true. The ratio can't be negative because both f of n and g of n are non-negative functions. So um, in fact we assume that they are positive that their values are always positive because since this is an algorithm course we are assuming that they either stand for the um, time or space complexity. So if f of n is big O of g of n we can say that the limit of n tending to infinity f of n divided by g of n must either be 0 or must be some constant k. Similarly, if g of n is big O of f of n, we don't know whether this is true or not, but if this is true, then it must be the case that the ratio of g of n to f of n must be either 0 or some constant k prime that's greater than 0. So, just from this information, either of these two is possible. So this is case 1, this is case 2. Now if this implication holds, then for both these cases, the ratio of the limit, uh, the ratio of the functions in the limit n tending to infinity must be 0 or some positive constant k prime. Now that's case 2 is the unproblematic case because if the ratio of f of n by g of n is some positive constant then the ratio of g of n to f of n as n tends to infinity will also be some other positive constant, the reciprocal of this. So that doesn't cause a problem because we know that if g of n is we go of f of n then their ratio must be either 0 or some positive constant. So this is com this is fine, this is not a problem. But if the ratio of f of n to g of n in the limit is 0, that means f of n has a smaller rate of growth than g of n or g of n has a larger rate of growth than f of n. But if g of n has a larger rate of growth than f of n, 
then g of n cannot be big O of f of n. If the ratio of g of n to f of n as n tends to infinity will be actually infinite. And if the if, if the ratio of f of n to g of n is zero in the limit, then the ratio of g of n to f of n is going to be to be infinite. So the ratio cannot be zero and it's not zero and it's not some positive finite constant either. It's infinite. If you're looking if you're talking about case one. So this implication is not true for case one. And we can come up with a counter example that it's not true. You can take any example where f of n has a smaller rate of growth than g of n. So let's say f of n is um, n. Now n is big O of n square. But so this is f of n and g of n is n square. But is g of n equal to big O of f of n? That is, is n square in big O of n? No. So one counter example is enough to disprove this claim. And the way we came up with this counter example was by seeing that there are two possible cases. There are two possible ways in which f of n can be big O of g of n. Either it has the same rate of growth as g of n or it has a smaller rate of growth than g of n. If it has the same rate of growth as g of n, then g of n can also be said to be big O of f of n because g of n will be theta of f of n and if g of n is theta of f of n, then it must be big O of f of n as well. But in the case where f of n has a smaller rate of growth than g of n, the ratio of these two functions is zero and so the reciprocal is going to be infinite. In other words, g of n is going to have a larger rate of growth than f of n, in which case g of n cannot be in big O of f of n.